Good morning, church. How are we doing, Grace Fellowship? Are we awake? Are we ready to stand and praise the Lord today? All right, well, let's stand together. Let's, uh, let's quiet our hearts before the Lord as we prepare to worship. Father, we give you thanks for this glorious day that you have made for us to enjoy, to share, and to worship you, God. Father, we give you thanks for every breath. We give you thanks for the opportunity to come together and to worship you. So, Father, we, we lift up our voices today to the one true King, to an audience of one. Father, accept our offering today. Let's lift our voices together. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King. Let's greet one another and uh, pass the peace of the Lord with someone near you.
is heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was a orphan, but you called me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my heart. Say his love. 
Let's sing together. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his wounds we are healed. He was cursed for our transgression. He was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his wounds we are healed. We are healed by your sacrifice and the life that you gave. We are healed for you paid the price. By your grace we are saved. We are saved. He was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. Let's sing it out. Thank you, Jesus. We are healed by your sacrifice and the life that you gave. We are healed. For you pay the price by your grace we are saved we are saved he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our sins the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds by his wounds His wounds, by His wounds, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the All right. Well, we are glad that you guys are here. If you are a young one, come on up. I've got a, a message for you today. Today is your birthday? Oh my gosh, that's awesome. You're going to have a dragon cake? Oh my gosh, that's awesome. All right, I'm going to sit right here in the middle so everyone can see is another one of my experiments, and it's awesome. There's water in there. Very simple, very simple, right? We have water, we have pepper, and we have a... How did you know that was dish soap? Could you see it? You know this one? Okay, don't tell anybody. Don't ruin it, okay? We're gonna, this is going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Okay, I want to share with you guys a story from the Exodus. You're probably familiar with it. Have you guys heard of the parting of the Red Sea? You guys ever heard of that? Yeah? Okay. Hmm? Have you heard of it? Not yet? All right, I'm going to tell you now. All right? Okay. Who remembers Moses? I've talked about Moses before. Okay. Moses was who God used to deliver the Israelites 
from the Egyptians, okay? The, the Egyptians had enslaved the Israelite people for guess how many years? How many years? Not quite. Not quite. That's not enough. Not yet. Not yet. Did somebody say 400? Did you say 400? No? What did you, what did you say? Oh, that's not it. Anybody else? 400. 400. Good job. Good job, Gendel. You said 400. Well, there's 400 years. 400 years they were slaves. Could you imagine that? That'd be terrible, wouldn't it? Wake up every day and you have to make bricks out of straw and mud and water. Do you guys remember seeing that in the, in the, in the movie we saw on our movie night? Them making all the straw and the... And the no, you didn't, you didn't see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so God, go ahead, Athea. Yeah, yeah, Moses saw them beating up on his fellow Israelites, and he told them, stop, and then he had to run away because something terrible happened. He actually killed the guy he was trying to stop, and, and so Moses was forgiven by the Lord and still chose and by God to be used by him. So here's the fun part. We're going to get to our experiment. Are you ready? Can I tell you? All right. So the, the Pharaoh let them go, right? And they all went off into the, into the wilderness and they came up against a natural problem. And it was called the Red Sea. There was nowhere for them to go. And guess what happened? Pharaoh changed his mind and came after the Israelites. He sent an enormous army after them to take them back. And, and so what do you think the Israelites did when they saw the army coming after them? Got they got scared. They couldn't run away. They couldn't go anywhere. They were trapped. Yeah? Oh, that was one of the plagues, right? He did use his stick, but not this time. Close, very close. This one's even cooler. Cooler than turning water into blood, okay? So here's the Red Sea. We're going to pretend this is our Red Sea right here, okay? And we're going to pretend, okay? We're just going to pretend. I'm going to put a whole bunch of pepper in there. <laughs> Got to have a whole lot. All right, here we go. That should be plenty. All right, and so everybody got scared, and Moses said to them, everybody, just be cool because God's about to deliver you. And so he turned around and he went like this with his staff into the water. Boo. Nothing happened, right? So you know what? God had to do something. It wasn't really Moses sticking his stick in the water. It was God doing something amazing on his behalf because of his obedience. And so here is what happened. When Moses turned around and faced the Red Sea, God sent a mighty east wind, and it blew against the sea, and it split it apart like this. Watch, guys. Everybody watch. Are you all watching? Kendall, can you see? Oh, no. It didn't work. Maybe get a little more. Oh, it's all splitting apart now. That was cool, right? And that's what the water did. It went like this. And the land was dry. They walked across on dry land, and guess what the Pharaoh's army did? You think they chased after him or stood on the water and go, oh my gosh, it's so crazy. They chased after they, him they, the water got there. That's right. Got him. Yeah. Oh, they saw a sea monster. That's right, they did. And they big old whale or something in there, right? Yeah. And the, and the water closed in on the, on the Pharaoh's soldiers and they all died. They did. Yeah. It was amazing. Wasn't that amazing that God did that for them? Yep, like your dragon cake. He split the water and he gave them a way out. And they were safe from the, from the Egyptians. Isn't that amazing? God loves to protect his people. And God wants to protect you. And you. And you. All of us. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. They do. More dish soap. Yeah. Well, hey, guys, how about we ask the Lord to help us to remember that he's always in wanting to protect us. He wants us to do the right thing, and he wants us to know him. Yes? He's red. 
Wow, okay. Well, hey, let's put our hands together. Let's pray and, and, and thank the Lord for his protection over the Israelites and how he wants to protect us too. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this great story that reminds us of what you've done for your people. Thank you, Jesus, that when we are born again, you call us your children and you take care of us. And so, Father, I ask that every heart here would be open to lo know you and love you and receive from you all of your grace and all of your protection, just like the Israelites did in the desert. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, y'all want to help me do some mission work? We've got some buckets right there, and we pass those around, and people put money in them, and then you bring them back up, and I give you a fruit snack. friends. Well, if you've got uh, four to nine-year-olds, you can send them down to Children's Church with us. We've got our teacher in the back. Miss Courtney is in the back. And, uh, and our nursery is available for zero to three-year-olds if, uh, if you guys have them and you'd like to send them downstairs. We have safe sanctuary qualified folks that would love to take care of your children. Um, uh, just a few announcements before we get into service. Um, I want to let everybody know, women, the uh, monthly devotional is this Tuesday. At 9 o'clock, okay, every second Tuesday at 9. Um, Wednesday night is our big uh, launch. We are starting our Wednesday night programs, and so um, there is teaching for adults after supper at 6.30, um, and then there's a choir at 8 o'clock. So if you like to sing, there's a choir for you at 8. If you want to learn more about the Lord, join us upstairs in the sanctuary around 7.30, and we're going to start a beautiful study uh, and, uh, and that's, it's from Genesis to Revelation. And so we're just going to have a great opportunity to, uh, to learn more about the Lord. Um, there is a program for your youth as well. Um, and speaking of youth, we're picking up snacks in the gathering space, um, homemade or store-bought. Um, we do have a couple kids with um, some allergies, so uh, please limit your peanut and oat use. Um, and that would really help us out. If not, and just label it for us if you do use it, okay? Okay. Um, Speaking um, of our youth, our Wednesday night program, we have stuff for your children. 
Uh, Beth and Kevin Kyle are leading a study for the young ones, and, uh, and we're calling it Spark. And of course, it has to mean something, right? And that's spiritually powerful and radical kids. And that is exactly what you will have when they finish this study, maybe, right? <laughs> now, they already are awesome and radical, and we're just going to make them a little more spiritual, okay? That's the real goal. They can only be as awesome as they are, but we can help them be more spiritual, and, uh, and that's what we want. And, uh, and speaking of spirituality, Sunday school is available at nine, uh, from 9 to 9.45 every morning for all ages. So if you have little ones and you want to come to Sunday school, come to Sunday school. It's all downstairs in the fellowship hall, and, um, and, and there is an opportunity for all ages there. Um, our youth ministry, youth group, starts tonight. Youth, if you are 10 years old or older, um, we have a program for you tonight. We begin at, at 5.30. Um, to seven and tonight the snacks are already provided we're having pizza i know that tends to bring chi ki children in that's kids and children chids and um and so uh if you bring them in we will feed them and we will give them spiritual food as well and we will play some games it's going to be a wonderful time uh just for them to grow in their relationship with the lord and each other um, it's an amazing thing when you have a network of friends um at church that transfers over into school because then you have people that can help keep you accountable and that is a good thing so that starts tonight okay at 5 30 um, and then coming up next month we have a special worship guest um, coming they're called the seed sowers they're from tennessee and they're going to be coming and we're going to show them some um, coal camp hospitality and it's going to be a wonderful time they're going to be here in service and they're going to lead us in worship and it's going to be a really wonderful time that's and it's october 22nd it's really small so sorry about that i'll make that a little bit bigger but just get that on your calendar for october 22nd you don't want to miss it um very very talented group um they love the lord and um and they have some some of their music is out on spotify or whatever you listen to uh pandora or whatever you can find them and uh and, and get, get to know them a little bit. But they're a really great group, and, and so they're going to be coming and, and sharing with us. Um, all right. I think that's all of my announcements. No, it's not. Oh, yes, thank you. It's right here, and you did it. Good job. Okay, um, the, uh, the chicken dinner. Guys, if you all don't know about the kicking chicken that we serve a couple times a year, it's coming up. It's coming up in October, the first weekend of October, just three little weeks away from today. Uh, mark it on your calendar. Sign up to serve. Uh, we're a few uh, rolls and green beans short of our goal in the back. So just check out that sign-up sheet in the back to help and, um, and get ready to have some amazing chicken and a great, great fellowship. We serve about 400 to 500 people. Did you have one more? Family Fun Night, September, or excuse me, the last uh, Wednesday of this, last Friday of this month, the 28th, is going to be a Family Fun Night, and that'll be an opportunity for all of us to get together one more time and uh, play games as families and um, enjoy a time of fellowship. So um, please check our Facebook feed, and that will keep you abreast of all of the things that are going on, and you can tell us if you're interested in coming and whatnot, and that helps us get a count. Um, well, it is September uh, 10th. And it's important for us to remember um, tomorrow. And so as we um, get ready for that, we're going to go ahead and watch this short video. Click on the little thing. Click on that little thing.
Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we come to this time, as we remember all of those families that were broken apart by disaster and tyranny, God, we ask that you administer to those families. This is all too real for some, Lord. Father, I pray that as we move forward as a country, as we move forward as a people, that we would move forward in your grace. That we would find in our hearts places for forgiveness where there wasn't. Room for hope where despair once laid. God, I pray that you would pull the veil off of those who sleep, that they may see your glorious light. Father, won't you be with us as we peel back your word and find within it everlasting promises of grace and truth. In Jesus' name. Well, we have made it now to our third chapter of the book of Corinthians, his first letter, Paul's first letter to them. And, and we've discussed a few things as we've gone on, and, and, um, and I want to just bring those to light. He's, he's shown them that, that within them they have some tendencies to act as Christians shouldn't. And they find themselves chasing after teachers Instead of chasing after the Lord. And so Paul with great love and care. Pens this letter to them. And, uh, and gets them back on track. Or at least that is his heart. And so today we're going to be talking about worldly Christians. Worldly Christians we see them everywhere. And, and if we're not careful we fall into the same group. Um, it's a slippery slope for us. And, uh, and so in this chapter. We're going to find some great insight on how to deal with that and how to correct it. And so Paul continues in his letter and he says, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now, you are still not able. You know, as we move on in these chapters... Paul's, dare I say, harshness becomes more and more apparent with his audience as they are not progressing and growing in the Lord as they could. You see, all of this growth in Christ, it's a personal journey. And the pastor's job is to ensure that those people who are following Christ are actually following Christ. They're not, they don't have a good idea about what Christianity is and then head off in some totally different direction. And he tells them that he couldn't even talk to them as spiritual people. They didn't understand what Paul was saying. Paul would continue. Remember, he said, I have come and I preach nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. That is the basis of the gospel. We wouldn't have the gospel if Jesus Christ had not have been crucified for our sake and for our salvation. And so Paul is continuing over and over to preach Jesus, to preach Jesus. And these folks are like, come on, Paul, give us something else. We've heard about Jesus, now give us the rest of the mysteries. And, and, and Paul's trying to tell them, there, there's nothing greater. I couldn't give you anything more. And right now, I can't give it to you because you can't understand it. It's too much for you. It's too much. And so as, as, uh, as he says that, that I talk to you as if you were babes in Christ. You know, we don't ask our smallest children to go and do massive tasks for us. We don't require them to do things that are outside of their skill set. And if you and I don't grow as Christians, we will remain spiritual children or spiritual babies. When the going gets tough, we will simply revert back to old behaviors and old mindsets, and completely miss out on the call of God for our life in that circumstance. God is bringing us into circumstances that cause us to grow, or they will make us flounder and shrink back. Those are the two options that the Christian has. And Paul is talking to these Corinthians saying, listen, you guys are just babies in Christ. You're not 
seeking after the deep things of God yet. You're still caught up in your flesh. You're still thinking about the outside and what feels good. He's been going over and over and over this for us as we go through this letter. And so he moves on and he says, For you are still carnal, for where there is envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? Now, I'm going to keep on using that word carnal. And if you don't know that, has anybody ever had chile con carne? Yeah, it's got meat in it, right? And that's what, that's what Paul is talking about. You're worried about your flesh too much. It's too much about you still. And Christ is not being exalted in your life in the way that he could, is what Paul is trying to get across to them in this letter and to us as we read it. There's always more. He says, are you not behaving like mere men? Friends, how hard is it for you to love on somebody in Jesus if you're complaining about the way that they're acting? How hard is it for you to grow in love if you're talking bad about the people in your community? When you're making sure that your coworker doesn't look better than you because you want the raise. Right? All of those things. This is what's happening in the Corinthian church. Everyone is trying to be better than everyone else. There's envy and there's strife. I want church to go this way. No, I want to sing this song. I want the worship to go at the end of the service. Right? All of those crazy things that we can argue about in church. Those are the kind of things that are keeping this Corinthian church from rising as Christ would intend for them to do so. And he says, for one man says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos. Are you not carnal? You see, he brings them back. You're worried about your preachers again. Paul wasn't cool enough. He wasn't on the edge or, or handsome enough. But Apollos, man, he was the GQ. He had it going on, and he was a good speaker. And he really advance the kingdom and so people glommed on to the good teacher over the other and 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 paul is just trying to get us to quit doing that look it's good when you find a pastor that you can relate to and that you can hear if you couldn't hear me you probably wouldn't come because you would find someone who you could hear from and what i want from you is i want you to hear the truth of the gospel i don't want you to hear tanner i just want you to hear the truth that God has spoken in his word so that we can apply it to our lives together and be better for it. God is calling us to greater. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believe as the Lord gave to each one? You see, there it was. Paul just knocked himself completely out of the picture. It's not about me. It's not about Apollos. This is God's work in you. God is at work in you. There's a lot of argument that goes on in this chapter about carnal Christians and whether you can be a, really be a carnal Christian. There are some folks that say you can't be a carnal Christian because if you are a carnal Christian, then you're only worried about you, right? You're not really looking for the things of God. You're looking for the things that please you. But Paul is talking to these young Christians and he's calling them brethren, which means that they are brothers and sisters in Christ. It is possible to not be fully spiritual as a Christian. It is a work in progress. God is working this spirituality and it goes, we grow in levels, right? We get greater and greater in our spirituality and we know more and more about the Lord. And, and it is the Lord himself who is filling us, who is giving us a knowledge of himself. So Paul gives this analogy, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. What is the biggest fight for some? We want, we want the outcome. We don't want to do the hard work. I mean, ask a farmer, how much fun do you have planting your seed? It's probably not the best part because you can't do anything about it. You just put it in and that's it. The miracle of life happens all by itself. And gospel preachers are meant to Share. We spread the seed. We tell you the truth and it lands in your heart. And those of us who are open to the truth, we hear it and it begins to take root. And then another pastor will come and he'll add to that. He will water that and it will grow even more. But again, it is the word of the Lord. So it is God who brings the increase to us. We don't get to do that 
So then neither he who plants is anything or he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Paul shifts gears now for us, and he brings us into the picture. Yes, majority speaking, he's talking about the pastors, but all of us have work to do in the kingdom, and Jesus has called us all out into the vineyard because the harvest is plentiful. And so there's going to be a time where we're going to stand before the Lord and we're going to talk about what we've done. How have you labored for the Lord? Have you labored at all? Or have you lived your life for you? Taking care of what you needed to take care of. Making sure that you had your ends met. Christ wasn't really in the picture. We might have thrown a prayer out every once in a while. Just to get something that we needed. Or some help we thought we might get. But God is calling us to a deeper relationship. Than simply a shout out every once in a while when we need help. God has called us to work for Him, hand in hand, for we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. See, here's Paul bringing the analogies. I see what what Jesus was talking about. Jesus gave the analogy of the workers in the field. And so Paul pulls from there. And then there he goes again, God, we're God's building. And he'll move on a little deeper, and we'll get into being God's building next week. But we belong to the Lord. If we are Christians, we belong to him. And according to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, we can do a really good job of laying all kinds of foundations. We can make sure that it's real easy for you to come in. We can make sure that that you feel real comfortable when you're sitting down. And I can do a really good job of making sure I don't offend you at all. Make sure that I give you that sweet gospel that tells you about a loving Jesus. And a loving God. Very true, very true. But if I don't tell you that that loving God is angry with sinners every day and longs for them to come to repentance, and if you are that sinner today and you have not received Jesus as your propitiation for your sin, your stand-in, someone to take your place, then you're in grave danger today. You're in grave danger because... Paul tells us that we're all going to have to answer for it. And he tells us how we build now. How are you building on your life? Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold and silver and precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it. The reason why that day is capitalized is because that is the day of the Lord. That is the day when he comes for his people and all will be judged. Because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. Friends, I don't know about you, but when I read this kind of stuff, I kind of squirm a little bit in my seat. Because I know that there's probably a whole lot more I could be doing that's a little more on the precious metal side than that straw, wood, and stubble. If we're not doing things that have eternal value. They will be burned up in eternity. And we will have nothing to show for it. All of this, all of this work that we're doing, friends, is in the end so that we have something to give to Jesus. If we don't have anything to give to Jesus, the loss is ours. How terrible that would be on that day of reckoning when all of our works are tested by the fire and we have nothing to give Him. Nothing to lay down at his feet in worship. That's not a good end. That's not the end that I want for my life and it's not the end that I want for yours. We don't have a lot of time. And we must use this time for eternal purposes. 
It has to go beyond what feels good right now. If anyone's work, which he has built on, it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved, yet so, as through fire. Here's that part for the carnal Christian. That Christian that has received Jesus, but basically lives his life for himself. Every once in a while gives the head nod. He is saved. Okay? He does know that Jesus died and lived for him. However, his life isn't fully devoted to God. Or her life isn't fully devoted to God. They live for themselves, but they, they know that God is, is true. And, and so their heart belongs to Jesus, but their life is led in a different way. Do you see their end here? When, when, when the end for us is what pleases us, we suffer loss on an eternal scale. That's a big deal, y'all. It's not worth it. It's not worth to live your life for what feels good now. What's convenient? Living for Jesus is hard. He, he said the way is narrow and few find it. Some of us get real comfortable in church. Completely forget why we're here. We just know that we are and that's good enough. But friends, if your heart doesn't belong to Jesus, it doesn't do you any good to sit here. What I love so great about that statement is that Jesus is ready to receive you. He's ready for your heart. He wants to heal it. It's broken. You need him. Let's not allow ourselves to go through this life living for ourselves, working for our families as hard as we can without acknowledging a Savior who died in your place to give you life on an eternal scale. Not just one that lasts for 70 or 80 years or less. Don't, don't get to the end of your life knowing this truth and not listening. The truth has been spoken. Live your life for yourself. You will suffer great loss on the revelation of His coming. Repent if you live your life for yourself. That's just kind of how you do it. Jesus is offering a better way. Jesus is offering a way full of His blessing and His safety, His companionship, His Holy Spirit to lead and guide you, to strengthen you in your inner man so that you won't end up like a carnal Christian who does nothing but fights with fellow Christians about what they want, looks only for their good, is jealous of other people that have what they want. we got to die to ourselves. A carnal Christian suffers loss. The spiritual Christian loses a lot in this world. The spiritual Christian gives up everything this world has to offer. It's a big compromise for us who love the world. And it's treasures. We think the world has something to offer us. That it's actually going to fulfill us and we're going to be happy. But friends, the longer you live like that, the more you'll find out that you're just lying to yourself. The world has nothing for you. It's simply going to take until it takes your life. That's it. And the enemy will lie to you and keep you deceived and happy in that place. Living for yourself. Flying under the radar. Maybe you go to church. Maybe you don't. Maybe you sing in church. Maybe you don't. All of those things are a smokescreen. Do you belong to Jesus? Is your heart His? Live for Jesus. It'll take care of the flesh. I promise you. The more you put Jesus first, the less you will put you first. You can't put two things first. But Jesus first, Paul is telling us. Everything else will fall into place. He promised us, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. If we can trust a God who tells us not to worry about tomorrow, don't you think he'll be there for us in it? 
He'll be waiting for us tomorrow. He'll take care of us tomorrow. But you got to believe it. You have to believe that Jesus is who he says he is, or all of this is useless. Just wasted time. Jesus is our Messiah. He is the risen King. He died and rose again for our salvation. That's the gospel. And it's open. It's free. We don't have to do anything but receive it. Receive that truth in your heart. Let it sink deeper now. If you already know that truth, let it go further. Because if you're still living carnally, then it's not down deep enough yet. We're still getting caught up with each other. It's not deep enough. God has so much more for his people than arguing and fighting amongst ourselves. We got more work to do. Way more important things than arguing, don't we? Look. Let us not be carnal Christians. Let us be spirit-filled Christians who long for the things of God far more than the things of this world. That's what separates a carnal Christian from a spiritual Christian, folks. If you love the world and you love Jesus, then you're a carnal Christian. But if you love Jesus and you live in the world, you're a spiritual Christian. Because Jesus is your priority. Let him be your priority. Everything else will fall into line, I promise. He always is faithful. He will never lie to us. He's not going to trick you. Life will be hard, but he's going to give you strength. And it's worth it. It's worth it because every time you do something for the kingdom, you are doing something that has eternal value. Think of the eternal things. Don't worry about the carnal stuff. Don't worry about the fleshly things right now. They'll take care of themselves. You don't need them. Jesus is all you need. He will take care of you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you, Jesus, that you are mindful of us and that you care for us. Thank you that you came and showed us what it was to live a life devoted to God. Help us to follow your example. Jesus says, this world crashes against us. As our senses are overwhelmed, we pray that your truth would ring out. That it would shine like a lighthouse from the sea that we might find our way back to you. Father, help us to quiet our spirits. Help us to quiet our mouths from being people who would argue and contend with one another in order to get our way. Jesus, we look to you as the author and perfecter of our faith. Help us to follow after you. Transform these old hearts, Lord. Rid us of those tendencies. Make us fit for a place with you above. Lord Jesus, you taught us how to pray. And so as your people, we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, be before we go, I want to take just a few moments for folks who want to come up for prayer um, it, it, I'm available here for you and, um, and as we do this let's just take some time and um, spend some time with the Lord in prayer
friends. Let's stand together as we prepare to, to go from this place. upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, beloved.